for vocab, we have nicotine, which is a toxic, colorless, uh, yellow liquid. Uh, it's an addictive um, product in the market uh, for cigarettes. Um, in large amounts, uh, like it blocks the uh, nerves in our brain that like stop us to stop, I guess. Um, for um, another one is adolescence, which is like the communication with these children. Secondhand smoke is like um, people that are exposed to other people's um, other people that smoke. Uh, osteoporosis is like bone weakness. Uh, it's the result of smoking. Uh, bone the bones become brittle and fragile due to the like long term smoking. And arteriosclerosis or something. Um, it's a disease where the plaque like, builds up inside your artery. <coughs> Cheap, I breathe through your nose, either. Plug your nose. And then, yeah, but maybe do like a jumping jack. Or how the lethal tobacco really is. It's affecting lots of people and tobacco kills around 6 million people each year. So tobacco kills up to 60% of users and from that people still use it even though you have a 50, 50, 50 chance of dying or you be eaten. About 30% of teen smokers will continue and end up dying. Will continue smoking and end up dying later on related disease, and nearly 9 out of 10 uh, cigarette smokers first tried their uh, first cig by the age of 18. Uh, 5.6 million of today's youth will die due to smoking related disease. Alright, so tobacco is the largest preventable cause of death in the world. osteoporosis, and also damage the function of your heart. So there is no such thing as a safe cigarette. The FDA has yet to approve the safety of e-cigs, <coughs> and there are also some studies going on now to try to see if e-cigs may be more dangerous than cigarettes. Uh, for our current event, we have uh, CVS Good for Good, which is like a campaign that uh, CVS started where 
they stopped selling tobacco products in their stores. Um, they have over like 7,000 to 600 stores nationwide. <coughs> are planning to raise the age required to buy tobacco products to 21 to prevent people from starting at an early age. So types of forms of tobacco are cigarettes, pipes, cigars, chews, and vape, and all of these have some type of form of nicotine, and either one of them is different than nicotine. Men use more to, um, tobacco often than women. As you can see, the top graph shows um, <coughs> the nationwide of tobacco usage, and China has the highest population of men. And then the bottom one uh, is the women one, and you see it right here, the youth. And in 2014, 2.5% of middle school and 9.2% of high school students currently uh, use cigarettes, and 3.9% and 13. Four percent of high school students reported um, using e-cigs. Okay, so tobacco damages every part of the body. It can harm nearly every organ in the body. This graphic right here says uh, 480,000 people die annually to cigarettes that being exposed to them. And some of the effects that tobacco can have on people it causes cancer, lungs, uh, and bad breathing. This is a graph that we took of all 9th through 12th graders at UC High School that we asked to take our survey. In the last 30 days, 86.3% of people at UC High School have not smoked a cigarette in the state as normal. Here it shows one third of UC students were exposed to secondhand smoke over the past seven days, which can be just as harmful as smoking. Since it launched in 2014, they have prevented 350,000 kids from smoking, and smoking and teens have gone down, has gone down like 30 percent. Okay, so another organization is a campaign for tobacco-free kids, and this is a they are a leading force in the fight to reduce tobacco use and its deadly toll in the world. Uh, it advocates public policies to protect everyone from tobacco. Another organization we found was the Action of Smoking and Health. They are fighting to prevent global use of tobacco. This organization has a wide variety of ways to stop smoking and the best way to stop smoking to help quit old smokers and to prevent new ones from starting. So our first interview that we did was with Detective John Collins, and he says that the consequences for chain smoking, smoking are not very effective. He also told us about how they get go into stores and try to buy tobacco products and that if the store was caught selling to them that they would first get a warning and then after that they're trying to get away with harsher consequences. Our second interview was with the athletic director here uh, Matt Percival and uh, Mr. Percival thinks that um, teachers or adults can't literally stop kids from smoking or they can't like make punishments they can't do anything to stop them from smoking. So kids together have to stand up um, to decrease the use of tobacco in each other because we as teenagers have to take that responsibility instead of peer pressuring, peer pressuring other students into doing it, we take peer pressure out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Our third interview was with Ann Bowers, a member at Clear Lake, Minnesota, and she thought the price of tobacco should be uh, raised so 
accessible for students and it was just really nice to have a chance to just like vibe. One of the many negative determinants we have is academic failure. Students who smoke are more likely to fail or do worse in classes. Smoking can cause uh, it can cause less motivation to do homework outside of school and also less motivation and more be more drowsy inside of school. Um, like said before, <clears throat> another negative determinant is cheap and affordable tobacco. So we thought by raising the price, it would be easier to get people to stop using it as much. Another negative determinant that we have is the lack of input that uh, teachers have. Uh, <coughs> they go like they go into school like not literally learning about how bad tobacco is or any other form of drugs like weed or anything. So. We came up with a solution that requires um, each student to take a class to graduate, so they have to take a class on drugs or like, I guess yeah, on, on drugs to graduate, and to, for the teachers to also like um, to teach about more about tobacco. All right, so one of our positive determinant was community service, and our solution was to require a certain number of number of hours for the kids to graduate. And the community service will like will help them get out and get away from using the tobacco and just like help out the community. Another positive determinant is the knowledge regarding the risks of tobacco. Tobacco has been out for such a long time that we all know information and stats about what tobacco really does to the body and how negatively it affects you. So that's one of the positive determinants. Um, another one is having regular school attendance. So students are only allowed to miss a certain day, certain amount of days per month. So this way students are in school in a safe environment and are less likely to start start bad habits like using tobacco. Um, our best choice was raising the price. Um, this was because we think that since teenagers already have such a limited budget, if we raise the price the, from what it is now, it's going to be even more harder for them to try to start buying tobacco. Here's our video, it's a little short, but we had some technical difficulties, we added another part to it. I hope the volume is okay. I'm just gonna read something off the screen. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully it's still doing that. 